Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. You are the steward of heaven. You are the steward of God. And everything that God has given us, he has given it to us. He's given it to us so we can produce, so we can increase. And I believe that this morning you're going to be amazingly uh, hopeful. You're going to be uh, blessed. I believe that you're going to leave this church knowing truly what God is expecting of you. I love to preach about the promises of God. If you come on a Wednesday, I sing, I dance. Um, no, just kidding. But I love, I love always, I always talk about the goodness of God because our God is good. But I always talk about the promises of God because the promises of God are for you and I as stewards. They're yes and amen. But there's other parts that we don't like to talk about it as children of heaven. And so if, we, if you're a daughter or son of God, you need to know what God is expected and expecting of you. And he wouldn't expect anything that he hasn't given you. So we don't have to panic. But let's open uh, the Bibles first and let's go to Romans uh, 14, 12. And as a steward means that my life and everything that I have is not my own. But one day you and I are going to give an account of everything that we did with our life. Romans 14, 12 says, so then every one of us shall give account of who? Himself to who? It's a bummer, huh? I'm going to give an account of myself. Do you know when we get to heaven, there's things that God has, has gifted us, God has given us all these things, and we're going to get to heaven, and we're going give to give our, our sheet of everything that we did on this earth. And it says you're going to give account of yourself, not of your spouse, not of your mom, not of your boss, not of anyone else but you and what I entrusted you you to do and if you still don't believe me let's go to a second scri uh, scripture second corinthians 5 10 let's run because time is flying and he says for we must all appear before the judgment seat of christ that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done whether good or bad well on this earth we talk about going into the, into the throne room of, of grace, right? He says we have access to that throne room of grace. When we're on this earth, he has left us everything. He left us with the Holy Spirit. He left us with his word. He left us with, with the inheritance that Jesus gave us, with his promises. He has, you and I have everything in life to succeed. But with that success comes this part. That I'm going to require, God says, I'm going to require for you to tell me what you did with your time. I'm going to, I'm going to require to know what I entrusted you while living on this earth. And so that's the part I feel that many times we don't like to talk about because it's the kingdom of heaven. Like, I, I, I love to preach about royalty. Usually when I do a women's conference, the theme is always the same. And Pretty much the same, not always, but mostly, most times we talked about as women of God that we're royalty. You know, we love to say that we are the king's kid. We even have like um, logos in our cars, you know, like the queen is in town or something like that, right? <laughs> King on board. Do not tell Kate me or something like that, right? So we have all these things, and we're so excited to be part of the kingdom of God. Why are we part of a kingdom of, uh, of God? Because we serve a God who is the king of all kings. So that makes us royalty, right? And so I've been into conference, as I said, and I love the idea. I love the idea. I love to, especially when they say, if you're speaking, we want you to dress up. I'm like, yes. You know why? Because that, that means I need to go shopping. Because they want you to dress like in maxi dresses, and all the women are in maxi dresses, and, and we have tiaras, and, and, you know, we love the idea, but we don't like the responsibility that comes with it. In the kingdom of heaven, as you and I are stewards of everything that God has given us, it requires us to be responsible. It requires us to, 
to respond and to give an account of every word that I will say in my life. One day you and I are going to give an account of every thought that we allowed in our head. You and I are going to give an account of every action that we took. Every deed that we did, whether good or bad, you and I will give an account. And I think you need to know that. But see, God wouldn't put all these things if he didn't, as I said, if he didn't give you what it takes to, to overcome. So in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus, if you read uh, the gospels, we read about the parables. So I'm going to go into a parable today. Go to Matthew 25. We, we get there. But in the kingdom of heaven, every time he was, he was trying to paint the pictures, he was trying to teach the people Let me show you what that kingdom of heaven looks like. But he could never find nothing on this earth that he can say the kingdom of heaven is like this tree. No, he couldn't couldn't do that. So he needed to paint pictures and stories about the kingdom of heaven. So he usually when he talked about the kingdom of heaven, he gave us a story so we can comprehend it. And have you noticed that every parable that you read, you kind of get upset about it? Right? Think about it. When we read a parable, we think that that's not fair. We can think about the, the parable of the ten, ten virgins, right? At the beginning, five had, five were, they were giving the same thing. They were giving oil. They were giving uh, the lamb. They were ready. They were all giving the same things. They were gifted with the same gift. But what happened? The other five got tired. Have you ever been tired and sleepy? God, why? Just be, they were tired. And then you start pleading their cause, but they were tired, Lord. You are going to leave them out because they were tired? That's not fair. But see, it's not about being tired. It's about what did you do with what he gave you? But in our mind, if we're trying to see it, In our society, right, the way that we think and rationalize it according to our culture, not kingdom culture, but our culture, that would be unfair. Because when I read that scripture and that parable, I think, you know what? The other two are not nice because they're not sharing. The other five, they don't share. They went and said, hey, can you give me a little bit of oil because we run now? And they're like, no, no, we're not going to do that. You go to the store and you go get it. Where is the Christian in that? Think about it. So he's trying to paint a picture that that's what you think Christianity is. That's what I think it should be. But today we're going to learn according to the kingdom of heaven. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. In other words, this is the way that you and I as children of God need to be stewards. So let's go there. uh, Let's go to uh, Matthew 25. But before that, let's, do a, let's have a game. How about we, we could do a game? You like, you guys like games? Let's play hot potato. Right? I tried to bake the potato this morning, but I burned it. So I have to get a ball. Okay, so I'm going to choose five people. Okay, CJ, come. Uh, let's see. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, let's get, raise your hand. Okay, you two come. George, come. In you, right here, come. Qu- quickly, quickly, it's a game, like time is like, pretend you're at the price is right. You will run if they will call you. Okay, come up here. You will be running. Okay, so you know how that game works, right? You've been, have you played hot potato? So what's the, what, what's, what's the, the premise of it? You don't wanna what? Okay, so we're gonna pass it, but you're gonna hand it. Hold it with two hands, pass it with two hands, and when the song stops, then whoever gets the ball, you're out. Okay, go. Quickly, quickly, quickly. No, I'm not playing. But thank you for including me. Oh. So what happens to him? Oh, you're out. You know what? You just release. You release all your belongings, all your responsibility. That's what you did. Okay. Uh, you 
you see how he was like, uh uh. <laughs> Sorry, CJ, you're out. <laughs> Two hands, no, not, not, don't bounce it. Don't throw it. No, yeah, see? <laughs> you're out. Yeah. You guys lost, everybody. No, just kidding, no. Okay, so you win, you win. Right, according to the game, but guess what you get? An applause. Thank you. Thank you for being a source. Okay, this is was a hot potato. In the kingdom, it's like playing hot potato. But in the kingdom, the one who wins is the one who gets to hold what has been given to them. This one says, your responsibilities, your belongings, your kids, your steward of all that, your steward of your school, your finances, your marriage, your health, your career, your time, your job, your relationships, your friendships, your grades, kids are in school. And so the, the premise of the, of the game of, of the hot potato is that I don't want to be caught with that. But in the kingdom, everything is inverted. In the kingdom is, hey, you don't pass your responsibilities around. You don't pass what God has given to you because it's too hard. There's too many things. I can only handle time. And so that's what we do with what God gives us. It's too much. So we try to, to pass and it's not even, have you met people that they don't want to grow up? But it's not that they don't want to grow up because they want to have fun. It's that they don't want to grow up because they don't want to deal with this ball. They don't want to grow up because I don't want to think, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do the balance. I don't want to be balancing my checkbook. I don't want to grow up because I don't want to pay the bills. I don't want to grow up because now I need to go to college, now I need to start my career. And so, and we don't want to do that. We don't want to grow up, but I believe that many times we don't want to grow up in our maturity as Christians. We don't want to grow up as children of the most high God. We don't want to grow up as stewards of the kingdom of heaven. We don't want to grow up, but I want the reward. I don't want a career, but I want a good job that pay me well. I don't want to, I don't want responsibilities. I don't want to pay bills, but I want to have my own apartment, right? I want to be married, but I don't want to submit to anyone. I want to be married, but I want to do, still do what I like and live how I like, and I don't want to ask permission to anyone because I'm a daughter of God, right? And so we do this. I don't want it. And so we're going to go to Matthew 25 because we're going to talk about the story of the talents. And I believe it relates to how sometimes we see life. So let's, 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 we have, actually, how about, how about for the sake of time, we're going to just jump on verse because I have the entire, um, the entire uh, parable. Let's go back. Let's go back. No, let's just read it. Let's just read it. Okay, for the kingdom of heaven is, this is Jesus painting a picture. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered them, deliver his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he, he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. Likewise, he who had received the two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Remember, we're going to settle accounts, right? So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you have delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. 
His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more, uh, two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And he, here comes my compadre. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap for and I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I will have received back my own interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to he who has ten talents. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he who will have, and he will have abundance. With he who does not have, even what he has will be what taken away. And cast the and, and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Don't you love this? Isn't that fair? Think about, uh, think about this, this, um, this story that Jesus is painting. Whenever I read the Bible, I always have conversations with God. And sometimes I argue his stories. Right? Like that story, you know, Lord. Um, first of all, in those times, think about it. This master, this Lord, it's a master, so that means he's a wealthy man, and he called, this is what I'm thinking, this is my imagination, okay, bear with me. So he called three of his servants, and he gave them five talents, which was a humongous gazillion money for them. But he called three of them, maybe I'm thinking maybe for him to be that rich, rich, at least he had like 10 or 25 other servants, but he called three of them. He calls three of them, and then he says, to you, I'm going to give you five. To you, I'm going to give you two. And to you, I'm going to give you one. And I'm thinking, you know what? They were standing right there. And I'm thinking that there were other, other servants just watching that these people have gotten some good stuff, right? And then he says that immediately he, he gifted, he says that he gave them. And if you study that word gave, it actually means he bestowed a gift upon them. So he gifted them. He gifted them. First of all, they wouldn't, in those times, lords and, and masters, they would never gift their servants because servants were slaves. So there alone, he already gifting you. Okay, you have five, you have two, and you have one. So you... Hey, I started with zero, but now I have five. The other one has two, and the other one has one. But I was telling God, like, oh, Lord, this is, I don't think this is fair. You didn't tell them what to do with it. Right? Have you met people that they never do anything because if no one gives you direction, you don't know what to do? Right? But do you know, before I continue the story, do you know that God says that he's the one who has given us the power to do and to will? If we're ever in a place that we don't say, I, it's just that I can't anymore, I, I just can't do it. No, yes, you can because he is the one who will give you the power to will and to do. And so if he has given us the power, and some of you are like, oh, no, he hasn't given me power. Okay, let's go there. Let's go to the verse because I don't want to, when my husband comes back and like, pastor confused us. No, just kidding. Let, let's go to Philippians 2.12. And I'm just paraphrasing a little bit of the per 12 and then 13. And I'm going to read it in two uh, different um, translations. But it says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to what? And to what? For his what? So everything that God has called us to do and to be, he has given you the power to do and to will it. And I love how the Amplify says it. Okay, let's put the Amplify. It says, continue to work out your salvation 
that is cultivated, bring it into full effect, actively pursue spiritually maturity with awe-inspiring fear and trembling, using serious caution and critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Jesus. For it is not your strength. Say, it's not my strength. But it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is, strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. He's the one who gives us the longing and the ability to fulfill what God has asked us to do. So I read that because when I'm thinking, Lord, but you didn't tell them what to do. But he says, he, I already, sometimes that's how we feel. Lord, you haven't told me what to do. What's my gift? Have you ever sat and you feel like giftless? Anyone here at any time in their lives? Only me sometimes? Because we're trying to see it in things like, this parable, I believe, that is talking about what he has given you, your life. And he says, I give this thing to you. And he says, I'm giving it to you according to your ability. Because he's just. If it was me, if I was the master, and because I want to look good, I would be, you know what, I'm giving you five to you. And you also should have five. And I want you to have five. And you should have five too. You know, I feel great about it. Like, oh, I feel so good. I gave, I all gave them five. Yeah, but she might have the ability to, to, to hold five. She might not have the ability to hold five, so I will crush her. Do you understand? Nothing that God gives you, if he gave it to you, you have the ability to do it. If we give it to you, we have the ability to increase because he's expecting an increase of our lives. Right? He says, what? You're giving me. We go back to heaven and like, oh, I just arrived, Lord. I made it. And you're going to play the song, looks like you made it, you know. <laughs> and you arrive in heaven like, right? And what, are you, what did you increase? So I was telling the Lord, but okay, so, so yeah, okay, I see it. So. You didn't tell them. And then I thought maybe, this is what, what I thought, like maybe the one with, well, if you see the attitude of the one that got one, he was like, he was very judgmental. He was a little bit nutty. He probably, I'm thinking that he saw, you know what, why did he get five? Right? They were all, they lived there in the house. They were all the same. They have the same master. They have everything. So they were in doing life for this Lord. And I'm thinking maybe he just said, you know what? How come he got five? I don't think that's fair. How come you got two? Well, I relate more to you because you got two. But he gave me one? Do you know that many times we spend, most of our lives is spent comparing ourselves or what we don't have, or what God hasn't, hasn't given to you. I, be, to be honest, I think I spent most of my ten years as 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 a as a as a Christian. I think I spent most of my ten my first ten years comparing myself with someone. And when you compare yourself with someone, you are in trouble. You're in trouble because the only person that you, you should compare yourself to, it's your own self. If I'm going to compare someone, if, if I'm in a race with someone, it's with my own self. And you never forget that I started with nothing. When I came to God, I had nothing. But when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, then I have everything. He gave me all of this. And all of you in this room are gifted. All of you in this room, God has gifted your life. Some can have five, some can have two, some five, uh, one. Okay, do whatever you can with what he has given you. You know, I have so many stories, but I'm going to show you my stories. But I remember, uh, you know, always comparing myself. Like, I used to think that God didn't give me any gifts. Like, 
And you sometimes you, you meet people that they're like, well, God has gifted me with that. Like uh, some people know how to sing, right? And uh, some people know how to dance and some people know how to cook. Some people never went to school and they never went to culinary school, but they're amazing at, at cooking. Pastor Jessica's one of them. Did you go to school? No, I was born this way. <laughs> she didn't say that, but I think like you probably born that way. You know? Your pastor Fifeli see him like she was probably born that way, right? But they have all these giftings, right? But that's not my gift. That's not, that hasn't been given to me. It's, it's not in my ability to sing. It's not in my ability to cook. Can I learn? Yes. Do I cook? Yes. But I'm saying as a gift. And a gift is something that they give you. God gave it to you. You didn't do anything to, to work for it. No, he just gave it to you. He just gave it to you. So, so we need to see, Lord, you have given me so many things. And I'm going to do with whatever you have given me, I'm going to increase it. You need to stop comparing yourself as a husband, as a wife, as a son, as a daughter. Look what they're doing. They have better things. You will be the most unhappy person. You know, for years, even when I was growing up, I, you know, you know, if you know me, I don't know how to cook. Everybody knows, right? I burned the potato this morning, so we had to play with the ball. <laughs> but... I remember going to, you know, like my kids, like, you know, they, when they were little, they, they were invited to have play days to the, the homes, and the moms go with it. So I, I would go, and it was like, oh, I hate it. I hate it because I would go, and then the moms, they have cooked all these snacks. They made all these, like, things, and everything was so, like, oh, like, is this a tea party? No, they were just having play day. Let's go outside, obstacle courses, that they, oh, we well, we do that. I was like, I will leave those parties like, I suck. <laughs> if the kids came to play to my house, they were going to get pizza and we we're going to play tag. <laughs> so I was like, it's okay, let's go, better go play, let's go play with their friends better. But do you know how much time we waste? How much time I wasted? Wasteful, wasteful, because I'm trying to be like that mom. I'm trying to be, and in, 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 in then as parents, if so th- some of their kids are like, you see all those kids, oh, my God, they've never talked back. They're like, they even have a halo on their head, and, <laughs> right, and yours, you start to see a little horns come out, and you're like, oh. <laughs> no, they, they just fell, and they got a ball. It's not like... But we're like busy, like, oh, my gosh, and I'm not enough. Maybe I'm not a good mom. Maybe I'm not a good dad. And then, and then we were so cut up, cut up, right? And then we, we just read the verse, well, one day I'm going to give an account. So, And then how do you view your God? How do we view our master? Is it going to be like, oh, no. He said, Virginia? People always say, why didn't you have more kids? I don't know. I only had two. Not that we didn't have. At some point, we decided, okay, let's have more kids, but it never happened. So, two it is. That's my ability. Thank you, Father, for gifting me with two children. And no matter what craziness goes with these two children, it's in me the ability to handle it. This is, this is what this... Parable means you can handle whatever I have given you. If this is your life that I gave you, you can handle it. Lord, but, oh, you don't know my husband or whatever. Hey, you can handle it. You can handle it. Oh, my kids, no. You can handle it. My business, no, you can handle it. So whatever God has given us in our lives, you and I are able to handle it. Say, I can handle it. This is for a woman. Men do this. I can handle it. (laughs) I'm trying to be manly for you guys. Like, 
Tia, I give you a gun. We have a finger. You have a gun. I don't know what men's group like. I figure I can give them guns. That will be fun. Holy Spirit, come back. Okay. So. Our God is a just God. He is just. He is just. And you have everything, whatever God has given you, has given you. Because I'm not talking here just about your giftings in, you know, singing or, or cooking or playing, you know, instrument. I'm not talking about those giftings. I'm talking about the gift. He has gifted you with life. And in that life that he has given you, you there is so much talent inside of you. Because one day we're going to give an account. You and I are going to be before the Father, and you and I are going to say, look, Lord, you gave me this marriage, and look what I did with it. Look what I did with it. God knows that it's difficult, but look what I did with it because you gave it to me, you gave my spouse to me, and I had the ability, the opportunity to increase in my life, in our lives, and for your life. Because when we do that, it brings glory to God, right? One day, you and I are going to hear the word, what did you do with what I gave you? Because as the master came back, he says the master came back, and then the one that had five, he came back, and he was excited. Lord, you gave me five, and look what I have. I have five more, and yay. And they said, good and faithful sermon. Now let's go party. That's, that's my own translation, VR translation. You worked it. Let's party. Quote me on that. No, just kidding. You worked at let's party. Before I forget, stop that comparison. Stop it. It will rob you and still the time and the life and the ability and the giftings that God has given you. Do not compare your life with social media. Do not compare your life in social media. You don't have to give me an offering for this. <laughs> Do not compare it. If you're having a little bit of friction or whatever in your life, and then you go on Facebook, and then you, let's say you're married, right? And you're like, you're having this a little bit of friction because life has friction, right? And so you see this cop, and they're like, in the Bahamas. And you look at the picture like, in the Bahamas. <laughs> and I am here doing dishes, doing laundry, picking up his mess, taking care of his children. <laughs> You're in the Bahamas. Why, Lord, why can they go to the Bahamas? You don't know what's going on behind their story, and you don't know what ability they were given. The ability means that when you have friction, you have the ability to work it out. That's being a steward of our lives, right? But we, there's people, literally people are killing themselves, committing suicide because they see something on Instagram or whatever, and then like, God is unfair. No, no, God. It's not fair, but he is just. And you cannot compare your life with some highlight of someone else's life. Whether it's truth or it's a fact or not, it doesn't matter. You compare your life to, hey, last year we were worse, but now praise God, we're in a better place. And then you'll be happy. And then next month we're going to be in a better place. And then the following month and next year we're going to be awesome. And then we're going to post a picture from the Bahamas. <laughs> <laughs> We're posting a picture, right? But think about it. Think about it. We only see like comparison in our gift and how good we are. No, we compare everything. I've been tithing all this time, but God hasn't blessed me. 
you know, we can go into all those things like, hey, I give more than them. I know because they don't have a, I have a better job. They don't have a good job, but I'm giving God, but they're more blessed. According to your ability. And every time to me, while God gave those men, those three men, he gave them the ability to take opportunity with what he has given them. So ability plus opportunity equals responsibility. Right? No, I want talent, but I don't want to be responsible. Would it be awesome that when we get to heaven, my husband would give an account on everything that I did? Like, okay, this is what Virginia did, and no, no, no. And then I will tell what he did, and this is what my daughter did. No, we're not going to do that. I'm going to go before heaven, and I have to say, okay, Lord, you gave me two children, and this is what I did with my two children. You gave me a spouse, and this is what I did with my spouse in my marriage. You gave me a job, and this is what I did at my job. Because many times you don't even see that as your as your, as your opportunity or your talent or your life and what God has gifted you. If you're working at a place and you're milking the clock, you're off. You're off. You're off. We are supposed to produce wherever you are. If you're flipping burgers, you better produce some good burgers. Because it's in my ability. If this is where I'm at in life right now, that doesn't mean this is where I'm going to stay. But, hey, I'm going to increase. I'm going to go from this increase to another increase to another increase. Because God has given me the ability. Right? It's the ability. We all have great ability. You have ability. But if you don't do nothing with your ability, you are going to be like the last guy. And think about it. The last guy, well, he was... I would, you know, I told you, right, like the parables kind of like rub you the wrong way. I was like, Lord, why do you call him wicked? That's not right, Lord. Right? You shouldn't use that word, Lord. You call him wicked and you call it lazy. Why? Why did you call him that? See, but we don't see the, the guy. If we Listen to what he says. He said, this is, listen, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will. He said, Lord, I knew you to be a very hard man. Very judgmental. It's the same master of the other two, right? So I knew you to be very, a hard man. And you always, uh, okay, let's read it. Can we, I don't know which verse it is. So I think we need to hear what he says in his judgment mindset. Oh, there he goes. Okay, he says, I, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Let's go to the next one, please. And I was what? And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours? Let's, let's leave it there, please. Let's just leave it there. The, okay, let's leave it there for a while. Let's leave it there. He said, Lord, can you imagine someone come to you? Have you ever heard people like, let me tell you this, but it's, it's in love. They tell you in love. You suck. <laughs> you don't know. You're, you're like, and they go through all this list, right? In love. I knew you to be a master that was not fair. That's what that was saying. You, you crooked, because look, look, you're you're scattering seed and you wanna you wanna a harvest, but you didn't even plant that. He's very judgmental, and we feel sorry for him. And he says, "I was afraid." Hey, I'm afraid, and I'm here. Think about it. They were all afraid. The three of them were afraid. Fear will come. Fear is part of life. I'm not talking about the spirit of fear that comes to torment you. I'm talking about God asks you to do something. You're like, oh, my gosh, that's too much. It's too much. Has God ever asked you to do something that you think is out of your reach? Is out of your ability? But then you have to remind yourself, like, no, no, no. If God is calling me and asking me to do this, then that means that ability is already inside of me. 
So I can listen to fear. So they're all, what I'm saying that all of three of them were afraid. All of them were afraid. But one said, the other two, what they did was like, hey, I was afraid. But what I did is I, I got the fear. I hid it and I buried under the ground. They bury the fear. And took the life that God has given them. They didn't hide their life. And that's what we do. When we're fearful, what do you do? You go into a retreat and you, and you hide yourself. You go into isolation. You go into a retreat. And I'm here to tell you that I have a feeling that some of you here this morning, you have been in such deep depression because you have been afraid of what your life is looking like right now. And I'm here to tell you that you can handle that depression. You can handle it. Why? Because this is the life that, the life that God has given you. And you, it is in your power for you to arise. It is in your power to, to, for God, that God has given you, for you to believe that this thing is not going to knock you down. Don't let hardness or, or things that are super hard in life, don't make those things hide your God given gift which is you think about it people go into retreat if something happened and and someone life is life and so we're gonna have we're gonna have encounters with life hardness struggles that comes with it but you have to remember this is my life this is my marriage these are my children. This is my business. This is what my career. These are my finances. And I can handle it. Because it's in my ability to do so. And so we only see uh, stewardship as like, I guess I say gifting. But look at your life where you are right now and you have to tell yourself, I can handle it. Say it, I can handle it. Whatever you're facing this morning, you can handle it. If you're a son, son and daughter of God, you can handle it. You can handle it. God has given us everything for you and I to succeed. And one day, one day, you and I are going to be before the Father. We're going to hear, what did you do with what I gave you? You know, that question should bring a reverence of our lives, a fear that, not fear as in like, oh, wow, it's me. No, like, this is serious. Being a daughter and a son of God is a serious matter. I have every blessing. I have the Holy Spirit. I have wholeness. I have, I have healing. I have all of that, and it's mine. And with everything that God has given me, with this inheritance that God has given me, it comes and it requires me to be responsible for it. And I'm not going to hide. I'm not going to be overwhelmed. And I'm not going to run from it. We need to, we need to conquer that place. We're stewards. We're stewards. We're stewards. You're steward. I'm steward. And we're the stewards. And God wants you to know that if he has called you, so be it. You be happy where you are in life. You might say, Pastor, you don't know where I'm at in life. It's not a good place. Be happy where you are in life because it's in your power to come out of it. That's not your, the end of your story. This is just but a moment. Right? And then you, you run your race and you look at yourself and you're going to steward whatever God has given you and your eyes are going to be straight up. I'm not going to be doing what they're doing with their lives. I'm not going to be doing why these people are getting healed and why I'm not getting healed. Why are these people are, are, are prospering? How come I'm not prospering? How come this family has it all together? How come I don't have it all together? No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're going to say, no, no. I'm going to fix my eyes. On Jesus. 
I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus. And one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to hear, what have you done with your mind? Jesus is going to ask you, the Lord, God is going to ask you, what have you done with your mind? What did you do with your creativity? What did you do with your strength? What did you do with your daughter? What did you do with you put it in? Fill in the blank. What did you do with it? And we have to say, well, this is what you gave me, Lord. Look, look what I'm, I'm bringing you back. My, I'm bringing you back my family. They're, look, they're all following you. Not only I'm bringing you back my family, my children now are saved, and then their children are saved, and, and then children will be saved. Do you understand that? And at the end of the day, those three, they all got the same thing. They all, rep they all produce 100% according to their ability. 100% because one got five and he produced five. The other one got two and he produced two more. So that's 100%. They give the Lord 100%. And the other one just like, lady, lady, lady. Oh, Lord, you know. It was full of excuses. God is not going to, that's what this is, an opportunity. Take this opportunity to settle everything that is inside of you. Get the strength that God has given you. Get the creativity that God has given you and use it for good. No way for someone to invite you. Do you know how many people said, you know what, I, I, in that, like, let's, well, I'm closing, but let's talk about church for a little bit. People say, like, it's because they're not utilizing my giftings. They're not recognizing my giftings. You know, I have all this thing, I'm so like, all this and a bag of chips, and they don't know how to utilize me. I was like, who? I don't want nobody to utilize me. Who wants to be a leader? I'm like, not me. Don't sign me up. Who wants to be a pastor? I was like, oh, not me. I don't, don't sign me up for that one. Because according to what he gives you, then he says, and when he says, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful with much. Now I will give you, I will make you ruler over much. Do you know what that means? I will give you more responsibility. Oh, no, I don't want it. Can I just get a reward, please? I just want a reward. I just want to get to heaven, and I just want God to call me my name. I want a few trophies. I want a tiara. Uh, yeah. But I do not want to have any requirements. I don't want to come out of my comfort zone. I don't want to do all those things. I don't, no, no, no. It, come out of your comfort zone. It's fun. You will tremble and shake, but you, you live. That's how I live. Look. I'm here. Looks like you made it. Okay. So I'm closing. You are not your own. And everything that God has gifted you, he's saying, I want you to enjoy it. It's mine, but I'm going to give it to you to, to, to produce. Hey, I'm giving you, look what I'm giving you. I'm giving you such creativity. I give you all this, and I want you to enjoy it, and I want you to produce much more. I want you to know that you have the ability and the capacity to increase and take every opportunity that comes with life and in life so you can get the best result for the kingdom. And then remember that one day you will hear that question, what did you do with what I gave you? So let's live that way. What, why am I doing what, what God has given me? What am I doing right now? Not what you did. Even if you haven't done nothing in the past, start today. What am, I, what, am I, what am I doing? What am I doing with my family at this point right now? What am I doing with my talents at this point right now? What am I doing with my creativity? What am I doing? Make inventory of the goodness of God that is in your life. And then you go for it. And don't let fear make you hide your life. Because our lives are not supposed to be hidden that way. We are supposed to live a life that is hidden in Christ, not in our own comparisons. Amen. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes.
And I want to pray for you. If you're here this morning and, and, and this message spoke to your heart, and you can honestly do, do inventory right now and, you, and ask yourself a question. Ask, what am I doing with what God has given me? Am I stewarding my, my family well? Am I stewarding my marriage well? Am I stewarding my business? Am I stewarding my strength, my time? What have I done with it? Have I been just complaining like the last guy that came and just said, it's too hard. This was too hard. But God will tell you this morning, I don't want you to be afraid. I want you to be brave. But if that's you and you say, you know what, I need to get right with God. I just need to get right with God because I know that he has given me so much. You're alive today, so if you're alive and you're breathing, there you go. The goodness of God. So if this message touched you, I want to pray for you so you can lift your hand. I see the hand. Thank you so much. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. I see the hand. Thank you so much. So let's pray. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that your word spoke to us. And that we seriously, Father God, even those people that didn't raise their hands, that they were seriously, seriously taking inventory. Or what, have, what are they doing with everything that you have entrusted them to do with their life in their own capacity, and their own ability? So I thank you, Father God, that today we recognize our ability that we have to get out of any mess. This morning we recognize the ability that we have to increase and to reproduce and to be fruitful in everything that we do so father we get into agreement with your word and we say that we're going to live out our lives thankful and looking forward to the moment that we get to tell you what we've done with us if today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.